Hello and welcome, and thank you for joining me today. Today I'm going to be painting a figure with a very thick skin. Let's get started. I start always with a very light wash to get the gist of where I want to place colors and also for future layers where I want this very thin transparent layer to come through. You'll notice a lot in my work as well that I leave quite a bit of the white of the paper showing. I don't like to fill in all the spaces and I definitely don't like to color in the lines. So this part of the process for me is a little frustrating. I also like to get as quickly as I possibly can into painting the next layers. And so this has always been very impatient time when it comes to doing the painting. But I've used a combination of a cadmium red with a little bit of a yellow okra and lemon yellow to give just a nice little peachy color that I like to lay down um, when I am doing skin tones. So, as you notice too, I like to use a little bit more than I probably should of yellow okra. I always have. And as a matter of fact, before I would do any of the these types of painting, I would do a value study of yellow okra and all of my watercolors when I first started using this medium. Now I'm going to jump into the beard, which I love, love painting the beard. And I don't paint everything in. I leave a lot of the white of the paper again. I'm a big fan of high contrast. It just really excites me in my work. And as you can see, I'm painting it while the skin is, uh, the color of the skin is still wet because I do want there to be a bit of a bleed. I don't want there to be extremely sharp edges and I can pick up a little bit of paint, which you can see I'm doing here, but I still want there to be some bleeding into the next color because it's going to help make the painting feel a little bit more loose and a little bit more natural. Now, you're also going to notice in the next frame of the video when it jumps that there's going to be a background and I'm going to explain that in a second. So. First of all, I have let this entire painting dry and before I'm adding this layer right here. But for the side of his face where you're seeing the additional background, and I apologize for not filming it, I just took a more concentrated uh, version of the color that I used for his skin tones and just used excessive water and just used my mop brush to splash that color. And then to get the splashes, I just flicked the brush a little bit. And while I'm painting the beard a little bit darker than most watercolors might do, it's because I have a lot of impatience. I tend to want to jump ahead, which has gotten me into a lot of situations and trouble when the painting will get ruined and get too muddy. So there's a kind of a mental struggle going on here because I like at this stage the paintings is starting to come to life and for me it's so important and just as a side note I can't let a painting like the, the under transparent layer you saw um, just a minute ago I wouldn't be able to leave that overnight and the reason for that is because I need to leave a painting in a place in which I know the next steps and 
for me adding a little bit more depth for the second layer allows me to see the painting through. You will notice that I have, I added on the corner of his beard a little bit of the turquoise blue. So I blended that in with his beard as well as the, you know, the, it was a bit of a transparent layer, but I, that gives it more of a, um, a, a feel of that, that the skin is, is coming through below the beard. And now I'm adding just a little bit more of the skin tones. I'm using a lot of Lurking Crimson. I use that a lot in my work. And I'm using a little bit of Ultramarine Blue just to get some rich dark purples. Still painting transparently. Not, I should say, I'm trying not to lay the paint in too heavy. And again, it gets me in trouble quite a bit. See, here I am adding one of my favorite colors of all time. This is the color that gets me into trouble the most too early on in a painting, which is indigo blue. I have learned to work with it a little bit better over the years, but I definitely take chances and risks. And in this case, you know, I think I pulled it off. You know, I'm, I'm liking the way the colors are bleeding into each other and I'm starting to get the sense of the depth and the size of this bottle. Mixing in a little bit more crimson and going back to my mop brush. Mop brushes are great, especially the size two. They hold a lot of water and you can cover a lot without getting that flat wash look or feel. And they're great for a loose painting. Was a lot of pigment too. Going around his necklace, add a little bit more visual interest. Probably could have just painted over the necklace and then just later on made that a little darker. But again, I think I was a little nervous uh, recording myself, which is a new venture for me. So, going back to some of that more original mixture. For my transparent under 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 layer the transparency just to be more interesting and as you can see i'm already getting a little impatient and i'm dropping in a little bit darker color where the necklace would be touching the skin now i generally don't like to paint details that most watercolors find meaning i don't want to give to show each strand of hair or paint even thin hairs like a lot of people do i like to give the illusion that there's hair there or the indication that there's hair and let your eyes figure out the rest I noticed I uh, like to twist the brush in my fingers, and I think that's when I'm thinking. And at this stage, I'm already envisioning what the painting to me will feel like towards the end. So I'm contemplating how much pigment to put on my brush because I start to feel I'm getting closer to completion. Now you'll notice as well that I did not paint the eyeball or the details of and around the eye yet because I'm going to go in later on with my liner brush to make sure that there's not a lot of water and I can really get in detail.
as you can see, just adding this little bit of layer. See, we're just adding the, the bit, sorry for the hat in the way. We're adding that little bit underneath his nose adds just an amazing amount of depth. And this is where, for me, the painting gets the most exciting. When painting hair or beards or that matter, you don't have to, in my opinion, paint you're doing a hyper detailed painting but for me I like to be as minimalist as possible and that's different from why I love watercolor so much and I love the pink beards they're just super fun I think it's because I make them really messy and right now we are, we've, I've let this entire layer dry. It's 97% it's dry. The paper, the, the paint will not lift up anymore. And now I'm going to be going in with my final layer.
using my liner brush is one of my favorite things to do. It just allows me to get all the wonderful little details that I love to get. It doesn't hold a lot of water, but it's a very powerful detail tool. And I'm gonna keep making my way up to the eye. Really love the shadow under his neck and the blending into his beard. And as you can see, I got nice movement with that liner brush. I didn't have a lot of water in it, but it can hold a lot more pigment than it seems. Now I'm back to my number three brush, round brush. I really want to darken up this area just because the light has to make sense to me. Now it's an ultramarine blue. Hopefully I won't overwork it, but I kind of understand how this color will dry over that dark purple layer. It will add a lot of visual interest. felt like his shoulder wasn't defined enough, so I'm going to bring him out the, the width of his torso just so it doesn't get lost. Now I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow underneath his nostril just to give it a little bit more feeling of depth. I want to thank you for watching today and I hope to see you in the next video. Would love to hear your comments below and if you've watched the entire way through, I'm eternally grateful. And last but not least, my John Hancock.